Over the last few weeks, I have been attempting to crack the DC boxes from Volnhub, which is a set of beginner level, um, deliberately vulnerable boxes. And I've been really, really enjoying them. I've learned quite a lot, and I thought today I'd do a video on DC2 and so showing you how to crack it. I will leave the link to DC2 in the description, as well as the Kali virtual box image that I used, in case any of you want to try it out yourselves. My company is also in the process of writing a Linux handbook, so if there's any commands you don't recognise, I'll leave the, the link to that in the description once it's ready, and I'll leave a link to our website as well. So I hope you enjoy this. Bye! I have downloaded the VM and it's in our network. The first thing we're going to have to do is try and find its IP address. I put in sudo minus s to get a constant root shell, and I do the net discover command to try and map out all active hosts in the network. If you're like me, 192.168.1, then it should be quite fast, but this will just go through all of them until it finds everything. Now you can see it's returned quite a few addresses. I recognise a lot of these, but I do not recognise 1.115 and 1.118, so I'm going to do a basic nmap now to try and find more information and work out which one of these is the virtual box. The nmap is now done, it has discovered that 1.115 is an Oracle virtual box, so this is DC2, and now we're going to go into a more in-depth nmap. I want to scan all ports, so I'm going to specify the entire range from 1 to 65535. I also want to see what services are running on these ports, so I'm going to add the minus SV argument alongside the very verbose argument, just so that our outputs are easy to read. Since this is a box designed to be cracked, we're not too fussed about being detected, so I'm going to allow the packets to be sent quickly with the T5 argument. So our nmap is back. First of all, we noticed an open port on 7744 for OpenSSH, as well as the open port on port 80 for HTTP. The first thing we're going to do, now that we know it's hosting a website, is we're going to try and browse to the website. So we've tried to browse to the IP, but it hasn't come up with anything. And we noticed that even though we didn't put DC2 in, it redirected to DC2 manually. To get some more information on what's going on here, we're going to use the wget command, which just gives us more information on HTTP headers. From the wget command, we see that the website's been moved and that it's having problems resolving the DC2 to an IP address. So we're gonna add this manually. I'm going to cat into the etc host file, add a new line here with nano. You can use vi, but I'm in the process of learning vi. We write out exit, and I'm just going to cat again to make sure the changes were made. And now when we do another wget, we get a different response. Hopefully this means we can connect to the website. And we can! So let's browse the website and see what we can find. We first notice that it's a default WordPress theme and we see a flag, our first flag. This flag hints towards a password attack. So to do a password attack, we need a list of usernames and a list of passwords. Adding WP admin to the end of the URL will take us to the admin login page. This can be hidden on WordPress sites, but they've left it as a default. One way of trying to find some usernames is to go onto this lost password link here and to try and attempt some usual default login credentials. If I put in admin, then it'll send an email to reset the password. If I put in something that isn't an actual user, then it'll come up with an error. The issue of doing it this way is that it's very obvious what we're doing and it's very tedious. So we're gonna use another way. <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're going to use a program called WP Scan. There are other similar programs for other content management systems as well. Let's have a look at the help page and see what arguments we need. We want to find usernames, so we add the minus EU argument, and we can also scan for vulnerable themes and vulnerable plugins as well, because that could give us another route for exploitation. Let's run WP scan, and we found three usernames. We found Tom, Jerry, and admin. Now we have the usernames, we need to create a list of passwords. If we go to the user share word list directory, we can see some already existing password lists. If I cat into rocku.txt, you can see how long this list is. We just can't read it, but that is a massive list of passwords. We could use one of these lists, but the flag hinted at using a program called cool. So let's have a look at that. 
Cool is a program which spiders a URL and creates custom word lists based on what it finds. If we send it to the DC2 website, then it will give us a big list, as we can see here. But we want to output this list to a file so that we can use it in our password attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run that command again, but this time I'm going to send it to the word list directory and I'm going to call it callpasswords.txt. Now we have our usernames and our passwords, we can start the password attack. Uh, we can do this to WP scan again, there are loads of other options. But I am going to put in the URL, I'm going to put in our password list, which will need the full path. And we're going to put the usernames Tom, Joey, and Admin. And let's run it! It took quite a bit of time because obviously it was testing all of those usernames against all those passwords. But we have found two passwords, which is exciting. We have found Tom and Jerry. So let's try and log into the WordPress site and see what we can find. Couldn't find anything interesting or useful in Tom's logging, but we found the second flag underneath Jerry's. This flag suggests we try and find another way in if we cannot exploit WordPress. We could try and find an exploit for the out-of-date theme, but I'm going to try the open SSH port we found earlier and see if I can get in using the credentials. Because humans often don't change passwords across logins, even though they should. Remember that they're not using the default port for SSH, so we're going to have to specify this. We'll first try Jerry, and that password doesn't seem to work. So now we're going to try Tom. <laughs> and we're in! It has just started downpouring in rain, so I'm really sorry if you can hear that, but let's keep going. <laughs> We've managed to get a shell on DC2 by using Tom's credentials, which is really good. So we're going to LS and see what we can find. And there's another flag in here. So I'm going to cap that, but I can't because it looks like Tom is in a restricted RBAS shell. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ls into home tom user bin just to see what commands we can use and it looks like we can use four. We can use less, ls, scp and vi. We can use vi to look at that flag 3, so we'll do that now. And flag 3 wants us to switch user to jerry, but I think we're going to have to get out of this restricted shell first. The only way I think we can do this is by using vi. When you enter vi, you can see there's a colon at the bottom, so it works almost like the more command, where you can put in um, bash commands into that shell. I'm going to use this to set the shell to a bin bash shell, and then I'm going to do this command here, which executes a script to get to that shell. After entering that command, you can see we don't have the tom at dc2 anymore, and we are in a different shell. I'm going to try and SU to Jerry, but we can't. And this is because the path isn't correct. When we're putting in that command, it doesn't know where to look. If I echo path here, you can see that it's still looking into the home Tom user bin directory. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change that path. We do this by this command. We export the path. First of all, we want it to look into the bin directory, and if it can't find it in there, we want it to look into the user bin directory, and if it can't look in there, we want it to go into the home tom user bin directory. But since that's already our path, we can just put in dollar path at the end. Enter that, and then let's echo the path again, and it's changed the path. So hopefully now we can switch users to Jerry. Let's try that password again, the password that we cracked through the WordPress site and we're into Jerry shell. So it looks like that password was correct for Jerry, but SSH access under his logging was denied. But we've got Jerry. So let's try and find the next flag. I have changed to Jerry's home directory where we found another flag, and this flag hints at using git. I'm going to see what commands Jerry can use as root, and I'm gonna do this by putting in sudo minus l. And it comes up that we can run git as root with no password. So let's go onto the git help page. I'm going to put sudo in front of it because we want it to execute as root. Notice that at the top there is a paginate option. 
which again, like Vi, is similar to more. So hopefully, if we paginate it, it should come up with the colons, and it has. If you do this command and it doesn't come up with those colons, that's because it's got nothing to paginate. Make your terminal a bit smaller or make the text a bit bigger, it should end up giving you the colons. I am now going to run the same script that I did before when we were exiting the Vi and see if that gets us another shell. And it does. As you can see, it's now taking out the Jerry at DC2 and if I put in the who am I command, we get root. We find the final flag in the root home directory and this means that we have now got root access to a machine that we knew nothing about. We only knew it was on our network. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm slowly working my way through the DC collection. I've done DC3 and I'm now doing DC4. So I might record a few more of these as I work my way through the DC collection. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this. Bye!